So in the last video, we looked at the theory of how to prepare a buffer of a desired pH. We saw that the optimal pH for a buffer is when it's equal to the pKa. However, we can go one unit and above or below when we adjust the acid to base ratio in our buffer, either 10 to one or one to 10. But maybe now we need to make a buffer and we need to have a buffer with a pH of say 4.25. And we've got a whole bunch of different compounds to pick from. So we know we need a weak acid and its conjugate base. So we could look at a series of weak acids here. So each one of these has a pKa. So it has a Ka that we can take the negative log and convert it into a pKa. So this is 1.95. This has a pKa of 3.34. This is nitrous acid. This one has 3.74, that's formic acid. And this one at the bottom is 7.54. So which one would be the best one? So pause the video and decide for yourself which one of these acids would be the best choice for making this buffer. All right, very good. So let's take a look now. So we want a pH close to the pKa. So if our pH is 4.25, we really want something with a pKa within one unit of that. So our best one here in terms of being closest is formic acid right here. So it's not too far away. So how would we actually prepare that buffer? Well, we'd go back to our friend, the Hendelson-Hasselbalch equation. So we'd say pH of the buffer is pKa of the weak acid plus the log of that ratio of the conjugate base to the conjugate acid. And if we look at this problem, we're given the desired pH. We have figured out the pKa, the optimal one. And so now all we have to do is figure out this last term here. So we can rearrange and we can get this last term all by itself. So we can say the log of the base to acid ratio in our buffer is gonna be pH minus pKa. So in our problem here, the desired pH was 4.25. Our pKa that we think will work the best is 3.74. And so if we go ahead and we subtract, we can see that is exactly 0.51. So the log of the base to acid ratio is 0.51. Now, instead of knowing the log of that ratio, we probably want the ratio by itself. So we can anti-log and we can get the ratio of base to acid by basically anti-logging and the anti-log is 10 to the power, so 10 to the power of 0.51 gives us the base to acid ratio. And on my calculator, I get 3.24, and just a sense here of significant figures, the number of significant figures that 0.51 has would translate to the number of decimal places here, so 3.24. All right, what exactly is our base? What exactly is our acid? So it's not any old base in any old acid. The acid is formic acid, so H, CHO2, actually that's kind of a lame way to write it. The molecule itself looks something like so. This is a carboxylic acid group. Okay, we could also write it as HCO2H. That's a very common way to write it. In fact, that's a much better way to write it. Why didn't I do that? Now, what about the base, right? The base is the, not any old base, it's the conjugate base to formic acid. So we just have to remove a proton. So if we're looking at our proton, right, this is our acidic proton. And so all we're gonna do is abstract that and remove that. So I'm gonna write that as HCO2 minus. So we just need to get that ratio of those two compounds to be 3.24. All right, now obviously if we looked in the stock room, we wouldn't find a bottle of the formate ion. We'd have to have it paired up with a counter ion. So we'd have to have something to counteract the charge. Ionic compounds, remember, have equal positives and negatives. And so something good to be would be something like sodium formate. So if we took some sodium formate, so sodium formate, I'll write the charges in just to kind of emphasize what we're doing here. And we took some formic acid and uh, we produce them in that ratio of 3.24 to one, then we would have a buffer of the desired pH. So it could be 3.24 molar to one molar, or 0.324 molar to 0.1 molar. As long as that ratio is 3.24 to one, we're totally fine. And actually another thing to look at here, so what did we have here? The desired pH was 4.25. The pK of the acid is 3.74, so we know when the ratio is equal, the pH of pKa are identical. So since we need a pH a little bit higher than the pKa, we need to make it a little more basic. So we need to actually increase this ratio and make a little bit more of the basic compound in there to raise the pH. And so that helps to sort of emphasize the fact that this ratio has to be bigger than one for it to generate a pH bigger than the pKa.